Hi everyone, welcome to the second video where I'll show you what's inside my other drawer where I hold my art supplies. This is the other drawer that I use to store my art supplies. In the earlier video where I show you the other drawer, the items in there, they were mostly watercolor related, but in this drawer, they are mostly pens and pencils. Let me take out this box here. That box contains um, accessories that are not related to drawing. This is blue tack. Let me show you the first thing. This is a tin box of Krita color pencils. I have mixed up some of the pencils. So this is the Krita color graphite aquarelle. This is water soluble. This is the Derwin sketching pencil. This is also water soluble. These are graphite sticks. Krita color eraser. This is not very good. This is the blender, the pencil blender. And these two pencils here. These are the Mitsubishi High Uni pencils. They are very buttery, very uh, good graphite pencils. Let's take a look at this pencil case. This pencil case is made by Lihit Lab. It's a very nice pencil case because can you, can you see these buttons here? You can actually fold a pencil case like this and push the buttons together and you can put it on your desk like this. So you can stand uh, like this. It's quite uh, useful and if you don't want to use it, you want to keep it portable, you can just clip it like this. It's like a normal pencil case. And let's see what pens we have in here. These are the Zik Mangaka Technical Pens. These are no different from Copic Technical Pens or the Rotring Technical Pens in terms of the lines that they can create. This is the Duke 209 fountain pen with the Fude nib. So the nib is bent. These two are the Pentel pocket brush pens. And these two are the Rotring Isograph. They are technical pens that are meant to be refillable. So that is the cartridge that you can take out to refill ink. You can put it back like this. It's very easy to clean this pen and to refill it. But they are quite expensive. But they last a long time, so in the long run, they are still quite worth the money. And this is another pen case. This is where I keep some of my fountain pens. This is the Twisby Diamond 580, or is it 530? It's 530. So this is the Twisby Diamond that features the piston uh, ink converter that is built in. It's quite convenient. I have reviewed many of the pens here, so if you want to check out the reviews for them, they will be in the video description below. So today I'm just going to give you a quick run through of all the items and there are a lot. So to keep the video short, I will not talk about so much features of each of the pens. This is the Namiki Falcon. I have one and two. Uh, one of it is Spencerium modified so the nib is a bit softer and it's able to give you very fine lines and if you press down it can give you a slightly thicker line. This is the Waterman fountain pen. I'm not sure which particular model this is. I cannot remember. I bought this a few years ago. And this is the Super 5 fountain pen that I reviewed a few days ago. It features a stop nib, so it gives a slightly broader line. And this is just a normal uh, rolling type pen case. Made by Dialphonics, I think there are a lot of other brands out there that make uh, this type of case, so you don't have necessarily have to get a brand like this. They are very easy to find online or on eBay. This is, let's see what's this. These are the Noodler's fountain pens. One is a Ahab, one is a Conrad. They are basically fountain pens with semi-flex nib. That means when you press down hard, you can get the nibs to produce slightly thicker lines. They come with built-in in converter, so it's quite convenient. The downside of these two pens is they actually smell and 
you can see some of the color they actually came off from this orange color pen to this um, cloth here and some of the orange color actually stay in this pen as well this is uh, let me see what's this case this is made by Durant this is just one of their pencil holders this is the Durant Intense this is a water soluble color pencil the colors are very intense hence their name each of these keys they can put uh, they can hold up to 12 pencils and these are the Durant tinted charcoal I don't use charcoal pencils a lot so um, because I find them to be quite messy and it's very difficult to protect charcoal paintings because after you finish your charcoal painting you actually have to spray or use fixative on them so um, it's very messy to use and it's not easy to protect charcoal paintings and drawings so I seldom use charcoal pencils and this is my pencil case one of my pencil case we have more technical pens here these are the disposable rotring Tiki graphic it comes in 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0.7 what I like about this pen is there's this see-through part here where you can see how much ink is left inside and they use liquid ink compared to other technical pens where they actually use some sponge inside and you cannot see how much ink is left and this is the Fable Castile Pit Artist pen um, again it's a technical pen so nothing much to show a sharpie marker permanent marker um, now these technical pens they use pigment ink so they are meant to be archival but this sharpie marker is not so the ink actually will fade so let me put this back in here this is a pen knife this is a free gift that was given out during the urban sketches symposium in 2015 that was held here in Singapore I'm not sure if these are the exact pencils that were inside the box at that time but here we have some Creta Color Nero pencils these are some of my favorite pencils these are oil based charcoal pencils earlier on I mentioned that I don't like charcoal pencils because they are messy but these oil based charcoal pencils they work just like normal graphite and they give you the intensity the darkness that is quite close to graphite and sometimes even darker I really love to work with this very nice this is a Creta Color graphite pencil just one of their normal graphite pencil and this is black chalk I think this is also Creta Color this is quite similar to um, charcoal so it's a bit messy as well and Creta Color is also the sponsor for the 2016 Urban Sketches Symposium so this was given out this year 2016 at Manchester it features a collection of pencil this is white chalk this is permanent red dark and this is the graphite aquarelle this is the water soluble pencil this is the mountain blue fine art pastel this is white chalk and this is the Nero extra soft they come in different grades so that is soft extra soft medium and hard let's see what's inside this box um, I think this is some pencil leads those two mm pencil lead sharpener eraser these are the nibs this is the zebra nib so these are meant to be used in deep pens they are plated with different colors so I have some silver ones and some gold colored ones also in this box is a spare end cap for the Apple Pencil I cracked mine accidentally so I bought a spare one and I realized that I shouldn't have bought the spare one because I can just use the cracked one it doesn't really matter to me it just doesn't look nice but it's still usable and this is the spare tip for the Apple Pencil so this is another rolling case, rolling pen case 
This is the Noodleless Nippon Set Fountain Pen that features a nib that is quite interesting. So there are actually two slits here, three times and two slits, so it produces a lot of ink. I have a review for this as well. These two are the Sailor fountain pens with food in it, and this is the Kaweco fountain pen. This is a very short fountain pen. You do need to post the cap behind in order to make it more comfortable. If you use it like this, it's too short. It's a uh, quite nice looking, quite unique looking. It's like a bullet. And this is the vacuum fountain pen that is made by Twisby. So you actually have to pull this vacuum pump at the back here, like this, and then push it down. I think it's stuck there. I haven't used this for a long time. So uh, once you do the push and pull, uh, action it will actually suck in into the this uh, reservoir here and this holds a lot of ink I seldom use this because I feel that this is a rather large fountain pen and the shape of this fountain pen is not is a bit unusual compared to other fountain pens I don't like it that much although the performance is actually quite good let's see uh, free gift from Adonit it's just one of the goodies from them this is another Derwent case here we have some Derwent graphite tin so these are actually graphite pencils that are tinted with colors I actually don't like the colors because I find them to be quite uh, dull quite subdued so if you want to use these pencils for um, color and shading I think it can be done but you don't get a lot of colors a lot of vibrant colors with this selection let's see um, Daniel Smith watercolor sticks so I've already reviewed them they are a bit soft in Singapore because of the humid climate but this one this is French ultramarine it's quite hot at least right now it's hot this is the Wacom Creative Stylus 2. I haven't used this for a long time. I'm not sure if it's still working. This is meant for iOS and um, Android. Here's another case with a Zebra ink refill. Yep, this is the Zebra ink refill 4C-1.0. Yeah, this is meant for those ballpoint uh, pens, those classy ballpoint pens. And this is a rather nice um, water tray that you can use to clip onto a sketchbook. So let me go and find a sketchbook. Let's say I have this sketchbook here. I can actually use this clip here to clip to the corner of my sketchbook. And while I'm painting, I can use this, uh, use the water inside to wash my brush and then carry on. I found this water container at a local art store. I don't know what's the name of the art store. I also don't know whether or not you can find this container online. It's a bit difficult to put in and take out, but it's quite convenient. A ruler, let me put it there. Oh, these are my name cards name cards that I've created to give out during the San Diego Comic Con that I went to in 2008 or 2000, 2009 so I made quite a lot of name cards another small water container that I bought but never used because this is too small this is the Noodles Black bulletproof black ink meant for fountain pen use it's waterproof and dry but how waterproof it is really depends on the paper that you are using it with most paper on most paper this ink is waterproof and this is another wacom stylus this is the creative stylus one version one so this is out of date Wow, I still have a lot of things to go through. 
So um, these are some of the pens that I have. Um, this is the whiteout. This is, I think, a Kuretake brush pen, if I'm not wrong. Let me open this and see. Yep, it's a brush pen and it actually uses bristles. I have not reviewed this yet. So I'll probably review that in the future. Uniball white pin marker. Copic multi-liner. This is a Zig Brushables. This is a dual tip uh, brush pen. They come in different colors. Is it light fast? Oh, they say that they use pigment ink and this is light fast. So this is quite interesting. I did not know that about that pen. And this is a mechanical pencil that uses a 3.1 mm lead. I'm not sure what brand this is, but it will be in the video description below as soon as I find out what this is. It's rather cute, but it's not really practical, I guess, because I don't like the shape and the size. Um, the lead comes in different colors, so I guess if you want thicker leads in different colors, then this could be the mechanical pencil to go for. Oh, I love these plastic cases that I bought here at a local bookstore because they are transparent. It allows me to see what's inside. So these are very useful transparent cases. And this is where I keep all the ink converters and ink cartridges. This is the Create Hake brush pen refill. So they actually sell refills like this that comes with the actual grip and the brush bristles here and this at the back here is actually some sort of oil I think to keep the bristles wet and these are all the different converters that I have this is a pilot con 70 70 this is a con 50 this is a Pentel FP 10 for the Pentel brush pen but I've shown you earlier that uh, in another video that you can actually refill the Pentel brush pen on your own so you don't have to buy expensive refills like this. This is from the Hero fountain pen. This is the platinum ink converter that is that can be used in all platinum fountain pens if I am not wrong. You can also use this with the Kuretake brush pens. So for example, this is the Kuretake brush pen. They also use the platinum ink converter. I think the rest is, yep. This is made by Core, you know, Polycolor 12. These are normal color pencils. They have watercolor pencils as well. I did not buy them. This is a rather new set that I bought recently. I haven't tried them out much yet, but the quality uh, seems quite good. And they are inexpensive so that's a good thing about them a durant tin case you see here i actually wrote the words reviewed so all these pens that are inside this box are meant to be uh, reviewed already oh wow that's quite a lot this is the perfect pencil by favor castle there is actually a sharpener at the back here so this is a sharpener and this is a cap and this is the pencil that is provided when you buy the whole thing this is a plastic body but they also sell this in some sort of metal that costs upwards of hundreds of dollars so this plastic version is of course much cheaper this is the Pilot Prera fountain pen a rather small fountain pen very cute but the design is very classy this is a very affordable fountain pen. This is the Platinum Preppy that costs, I think, five US dollars. You can use the Platinum ink converter with this as well. This is a, I would say, a good fountain pen for our beginners because it is inexpensive. This is the Hero 501 fountain pen with the Fude nib. So the nib is actually bent at the top there. I bought this at a local art store. This is the Lamy Safari fountain pen. 
that I also recommend to beginners because it's inexpensive. The ink cartridge that is here, I mean this ink converter is sold separately. So that adds up to a bit of the cost. This is a disposable Pilot V pen. It's a fountain pen, but it's disposable. Wow, this is the same fountain pen that I showed earlier, except this is very well worn. This is my first fountain pen, the Hero 501. This is also a Hero fountain pen. I'm not sure which model this is but the nib is sort of built into the grip section so I'm not sure how I would be able to clean something like this this is another hero pen with a full day nib as well so the nib is bent here and it uses ink converter the construction, the build quality is actually very solid it's metal cap and metal body but it's a bit heavy this is the pilot high tech point v5 they also have v7 and they come with a lot of different designs i like this disposable pen because it features a needle nib i like drawing with needle nibs like this I am not sure what is this uh, fountain pen. Oh, it's the Aster Brooks fountain pen. So they have this little uh, thing here where you can actually pull out to refill the ink. So inside is actually some sort of a sack. So when you pull this lever here, it will push the ink out and when you release it, it will suck the ink back in. It's not one of my favorite fountain pens because it's not easy to refill the ink and you cannot see how much ink is left inside and it's not easy to clean this pen as well so i don't really like this pen this is a pen that was given to me by a friend this is the bauer b-a-o-e-r probably made in china yeah he bought this pen to grind off the nib so this nib is a stop nib and he gave it to me because um, he likes to experiment with pens and this is very inexpensive so he bought this just to practice grinding the nib all right let me put this back this is a uh, night at the museum i think this in case is from some goodie bag but i use this to store my color pencil this is the Corino hot move magic pencils they are very fun to use and you can see all the different colors they have each pencil has three colors and they come with a big razor to help you sharpen because these pencils they are not standard size pencils fun to use oh right here is the smaller magic pencil so this is the standard size pencil and these are the thicker pencils very cute a wooden case with oh okay this is uh, one of those folded pencil so this is actually made by my friend he cut some metal and folded the metal together and used a stick so that this metal piece acts as a knit you can put it with the stick to use it like a dip pen and because the shape here is quite big you can actually get very expressive uh, ink strokes with this i have not reviewed this yet but i will review this in the future this is quite fun to use and a very nice thing that you can make on your own i'm not sure where this wooden box uh, is from these are color pencils, watercolor pencils from Derwent. Standard size color pencils. And this is the ink tents that I showed earlier on.
These are more pencils, white chalk pencils. This is a Durant burnisher. This is a blender. And these are some colored chalk. I'm not sure from which brand. brand. This is the blender as well. The paper blender, eraser. And this is, oh, this is the Daniel Smith watercolor stick. I did not know that I have one here. In this box, I have my technical pens, the Copic Multiliner. This is the disposable one, and this is the refillable one. Uh, I have reviewed it before, but I want to say it again. The disposable one is more worth it's worth the money. This refillable one is not because the tip it wears off quickly, and you have to spend money to replace the tip. So it's better to get the disposable ones. This is a Copic drawing pen. This looks like a fountain pen to me. The line that it can create is very very thin. So if you need very thin lines, this is the pen to get. And this is waterproof when dry. This is a sailor fountain pen called my first. It comes with two nibs. One is the normal nib with uh, that gives you the uniform line. The other is actually a full day nib that is bent, so it gives you um, lines of varying thickness. Oops, there is no ink converter inside. When you buy this pen, it actually comes in a box like this. So this is the box for that fountain pen. Sailor, my first. And these are the two different nibs that you can get. Let's see what else we have here. A Lenny Safari. I think that's all there is in this box. Yep. So this video is really going to be quite long because there are so many things. This is where I keep all my mechanical pencils. Um, I like to use the Pilot mechanical pencil. This is the H325. This is the H327 and there is the H329. They are very good high quality mechanical pencils. And this is the Stettler lead holder that holds the 2mm lead. So other things are like this retractable eraser. And of course and some pencil leads refillable. And we are down to the last box. This is this is actually the you know those gum eraser, nettable eraser. So if you need to clean off a certain small area of your pencil art, you can actually twist this eraser into a small area and just uh, erase off. Mm, more ink cartridges. These ink cartridges are actually for the Pilot Parallel Pens. So I don't have that with me right now, at least not in this particular drawer. All right, let me put back some of the things here. And these are Rotary ink. So they come in small bottles like this with 23 ml. They also sell in a very large bottle with 250 ml. The thing with this is it has a tapered opening. So you can use this to refill your Rotary pens. This is black, they come with blue ink and also red ink. This is the white out. You can see the solution has separated from the white pigment. I bought this but I have never used that before. I wonder why I uh, bought that in the first place. Uh, Stettler portable eraser. Oh, this is actually an ink bottle for the for the Twisby vacuum fountain pen earlier that I show you. Let me go and find that fountain pen again. So with this bottle, you can actually put your fountain pen in. 
assuming that there is ink inside you can actually put your fountain pen ink uh, put your fountain pen into this bottle like this and you can pull and push the piston behind and it will suck the ink into this fountain pen so that's quite uh, ingenious to design a bottle like this but the bottle does not work with other fountain pens so that's the downside see oh this is the sharpener for the Statler 2mm lead so I think you might have seen this before it's quite common for artists to use that these are some free gifts from artist.com.sg artist is run by my friend he sells Daniel Smith watercolor and Stillman and Burns sketchbooks and recently they started carrying the DR Tremantis document ink these are actually archival ink, pigmented ink that is made specially for fountain pens so they are waterproof and dry and they come in different colors like this so it's quite fun you can use them as it is or you can mix them together to get different colors as you would with uh, watercolor these are some ink that were, that were sent to me to test by my friend J. Herbin this is Pelican and yep I'm not sure what some of the brands are I haven't used them for a long time they are still um, quite a lot of them left oh this is Dela Rowley Gosh White I bought this um, to paint white areas in my watercolor but I found out that it's not as convenient to use because I actually have to bring this tube out so usually I just like to bring my watercolor box out and with a brush and nothing else so this is something extra that I have to bring out so I don't like to bring extra things out if necessary and this is the perfect sharpener this is called the KUM, K -U -M, automatic long point sharpener comes with two blades one blade is for you to lengthen the lead and the other is to sharpen the lead so with this sharpener you can actually sharpen a pencil to a very long point for example you can sharpen a pencil like this to a point like this which exposes a lot of the lead so that I think that sharpener is the best sharpener there is out there for color pencils and also graphite pencils yes I think that's all oh okay this is interesting oh I never thought I would find this here this is not art related but this is actually a transport card so here in Singapore we use this sort of card to get around the public transport you just tap this onto their station and the gate would open so this is the card that we use so that's all for today's video uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section i will post the links to all the items that i have reviewed that you have seen earlier in the video description below so you can check them out in greater detail thanks for watching i hope this is helpful see you in the next video bye